Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AW Collision Review. Tonight was the debut of AW Collision, which took place in uh, Chicago at the United Center. And this was all built around the return of CM Punk, to which Punk has been out for 10 months. Of course, he had an injury. And then we all know what happened, you know, with Punk during the All Out Post Media Scrum and, you know, the drama with Punk and the Elite and Jericho. You know, there were points where Jericho was like, oh, I don't want to work, you know, with CM Punk. But Collision, this was all brought about because, you know, some people in the AEW locker room doesn't want to work uh, with CM Punk. So they're splitting. From what I heard, they're going to split, you know, the, the roster. You know, anybody that doesn't want to work, you know, with CM Punk will be on Dynamite. And then, like, if anybody is comfortable, you know, with Punk and, you know, just wanting to work with Punk, they'll be on Collision. So, but it was good to see CM Punk, you know, return tonight, you know, in his hometown in Chicago. The crowd was electric throughout the night and it was a very good show. Very entertaining. I liked the pacing of the show and it moved pretty quickly. It had me entertained for the two hours. So it was on TNT of course. But collision for uh, the premiere show, we had the TNT Championship on the line. We, we had Luchasaurus versus Warlow. Warlow uh, defended the TNT Championship. We had Andrade El Ilo. He made his return. He ended up taking on Buddy Matthews. We also had the return of Miro, finally. And Miro took on Tony Nese. We had Sky Blue and Will Nightingale teaming up to take on Ruby Soho and Tony Storm of the Outcasts or the Borcasts, which I would call them. And the main event, we had FTR and CM Punk versus Juice Robinson, Jay White, and Samoa Joe. But overall, AEW Collision for its premiere show, it was very good and very entertaining. You know, the, that Chicago crowd was electric throughout the night. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. So the premiere of AEW Collision opened up with none other than the return of CM Punk. CM Punk came out, got a big, huge ovation from his hometown crowd in Chicago, and the United Center looked really packed uh, for the show tonight. Uh, the, uh, I forgot to mention, the stage for Collision looked awesome. And they had uh, red ring ropes, you know, set up, you know, on the ring, which kind of gave it a throwback to uh, WCW Nitro, which uh, was cool to see. So Punk came out. Of course, he had his head shaved. He had shoes around his neck. He was carrying a red bag as he made his way down to the ring. So, we had Punk enter in the ring, and he walked around the ring. He was pointing to the fans. He looked like he was happy to be there. And he was taking in the uh, fan reaction. So, he got on the mic. And he kept saying, I don't know if you guys heard, but I am tired. Of being nice. 
So Punk ended up saying that he was gone 10 months with a torn tricep. He ended up saying this is a business of grown-ups and not a popularity contest. Punk ended up saying if he told his younger self if he sold out buildings, he would have not believed it as his younger self. Punk ended up saying that he is tired of being nice. He ended up saying that he got here riding the waves of smart wrestling fans. And he wanted to say that he loves the fans and the fans love him. He then wanted to say that he could not have done all this without all the fans. See, Punk actually cares about his fans. Punk ended up saying that there are some that hate him for the same reasons. And the fans end up booing. He wants to say that his near presence makes people uncomfortable. And the truth is painful. Fans started chanting all elite. So he ended up pointing out different signs in the crowd. Punk ended up going to say that you can boo him or hate him or call him whatever you want. Boo him or cheer him. So he ended up saying that he is called Phil Bill, full of counterfeit bills. He ended up saying that the king is back and he has a lot of things to get off his chest. So Punk started to laugh a little bit. The fans were cheering him. So Punk ended up asking Chicago, why would he change? He ended up saying that he will always speak truth and never compromise. And it's true. Punk is a guy who is just going to speak his mind about anything. This is a guy who is not going to hold back on bullshit. He's going to speak his mind and, you know, speak of the bullshit. You know, whether, you know, it's going on on TV or behind the scenes. He's going to speak it. He's not going to hold back on shit. So, Punk ended up saying that there are people who think they are owed an apology. He ended up saying that he has grown to be a bigger man. He wants to say that he is sorry that the guys are bigger than the wrestlers you like. And to ask him when he is telling lies. So, Punk ended up saying that the red bag that he has contains what he said is his. And it's his. And all have to beat him for it. Punk ended up saying that until there is someone that can fill his boots, this belongs on his feet, and to tell him when he's telling lies. So Punk ended up uh, walking out of the ring with the red bag. Fans were chanting uh, Punk. So he looked at the camera. Punk looked at the camera, and he ended up saying that he didn't come to AEW to be a star. That he is a star. So pretty much that was basically how the segment ended. But what a good promo this was from Punk. You know, he's not issuing an apology for what happened. You know, at the all-out post media scrum. You know, he doesn't need uh, an apology. He doesn't need to say he's sorry about you know the stuff that he did. Overall, very good promo from Punk here. Really glad that he is back on TV. I know there are some people who love Punk. There are some people who hate him and think he's an asshole. But the guy is a talented wrestler. And he's very good on the mic. You know, you could tell that he actually cares about the business. He actually cares about professional wrestling and that he loves it. So, but overall, good promo it was from Punk. And then we went to the first match uh, for Collision, the very first match. And it was a TNT Championship match. Warlow defended the title against 
Luchasaurus. Now, you know me, I don't care about anything surrounding the TNT Championship. The TNT Championship has lost all its prestige because of the booking around the title. It's hot potato with the TNT Championship. We all know it. So we had Christian Cage end up coming out. And then Luchasaurus uh, made his way out. Luchasaurus, of course, accompanied by Christian Cage. And then Warlow end up coming out. And the match itself was uh, good in my opinion. So the match got underway. Both Warlow and Luchasaurus end up locking up. Warlow attempted to hit a shoulder block to Luchasaurus. And he ended up dropping Luchasaurus with a drop kick as Luchasaurus rolled to the outside. Warlow came out from the ring and he had been down on Luchasaurus on the floor. Warlow then grabbed Christian Cage, to which uh, Christian Cage was trying to escape under the ring. So Warlow pulled uh, Christian out. Christian was then hiding, but he ended up pulling on Warlow's boot. Luchasaurus ended up pushing uh, Warlow to the floor. Luchasaurus then tossed Warlow into the ring steps. He then tossed Warlow back into the ring. Luchasaurus ended up going for the cover, to which Warlow kicked out. Warlow then attempted to fight back. Luchasaurus ended up chopping Warlow. And then Luchasaurus followed that up with a big boot to Warlow. And then Collision went to commercial, to which I forgot to mention. The commentary team for Collision uh, was Kevin Kelly and also Nigel McGuinness. It was good to hear, you know, Nigel McGuinness, again, it's been a long while since I heard, you know, Nigel McGuinness do commentary. So, but I thought uh, they were decent uh, together on commentary. And then he had uh, Jim Ross later on, you know, do commentary. But as Collision came back from the commercial, Warlow was in control of the match. He had Luchasaurus on his shoulders. And it looked like uh, Warlow was uh, bleeding from his mouth. So Warlow ended up dropping Luchasaurus. The fans were behind Warlow. And Warlow ended up pushing uh, Luchasaurus in the corner. Warlow ended up nailing Luchasaurus with some shoulder blocks. Warlow then picked up uh, Luchasaurus, ended up dropping him. Warlow went up to the top rope. Luchasaurus got up. He ended up hitting the ring ropes. He ended up grabbing Warlow and dropped him. Luchasaurus ended up going for the cover, and Warlow kicked out. Luchasaurus then ended up grabbing Warlow's neck. Warlow ended up trying to come back, but... Luchasaurus delivered a huge elbow to Warlow's face. Warlow ended up nailing Luchasaurus with a huge forearm. And then he picked up Luchasaurus and nailed Luchasaurus with a huge power bomb. Christian Cage had a chair in hand as Warlow uh, had his back turn. So Warlow was calling for another power bomb to Luchasaurus. So Warlow picked up Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus ended up uh, counter in, and he ended up dropping Warlow, and Luchasaurus ended up going for the cover. Warlow ended up kicking out. Warlow then picked up Luchasaurus and power slammed him. Warlow went to the top rope. He ended up landing a huge swanton on Luchasaurus. Christian Cage was up on the apron. So Luchasaurus was up. Christian ended up grabbing a camera. And the ref was distracted, and Christian ended up nailing Warlow with the camera. So Luchasaurus ended up going for the cover, and there you go. Luchasaurus ended up winning the match, and he is the new TNT champion. Post-match Luchasaurus had Christian on his shoulders, and they both ended up celebrating uh, the win you know, by Luchasaurus. 
And that was basically that. But overall, thought it was a good match. And, you know, hopefully they give Luchasaurus a long reign with the TNT Championship. I have low expectations about AEW or Tony Khan, you know, booking Luchasaurus for a long reign as a TNT champion. Watch. You know, Luchasaurus is a TNT champion. Watch. Warlow will probably get a rematch and watch. The TNT Championship will be going right back to Warlow. Watch. They're going to keep doing this hot potato shit with the TNT Championship. If not, I would be shocked. I would be shocked if they give Luchasaurus a long little reign with the TNT Championship. But, you know, I have low expectations for that. I like I said, I don't care about anything surrounding the TNT Championship. Because it is just a hot potato title. Oh, we have Luchasaurus, you know, win the TNT Championship tonight. Imagine it going right back to Warlow. If they do a rematch. Overall, good match it was. And then we had Lexi Nair. Lexi Nair was backstage with Powerhouse Hobbs and QT Marshall. QT Marshall ended up saying that Hobbs doesn't share the spotlight. And that Hobbs will win the Owen Hart tournament. Hobbs ended up saying that he is the new face of TNT. And winning the tournament and taking what is his. So that's what Hobbs had to say. But hopefully, I'd like to see Hobbs win uh, the Owen Hart tournament. I think he deserves it. You know, after losing the TNT Championship, which he shouldn't have lost the TNT Championship. I think they missed a opportunity on having Hobbs, you know, have a long reign with the TNT Championship. But, you know, they should have had uh, Hobbs have a long reign with the TNT Championship instead of giving the title back to Wardlow. So I hope Hobbs, you know, will win the Owen Hart tournament. But that's just my opinion. But we'll see. And then we had Andrade El Idolo versus Buddy Matthews. This was a awesome match here. An awesome return for Andrade. You know, very awesome match, you know, for his return. So we had Buddy Matthews end up coming out first. He was accompanied by Julia Hart. And then Andrade end up coming out. Andrade was wearing uh, this awesome looking mask as he made his way down to the ring. So the fans were chanting, welcome back to Andrade, which he deserved that you know, great ovation of him returning. It's been a long while since Andrade was on TV. So the bell ended up ringing. Both Andrade and Buddy Matthews end up walking around the ring. They were looking at each other. Both guys locked up. Andrade was hit with a shoulder block from Buddy Matthews. Both guys end up testing their strength. Andrade was then taken down by Buddy Matthews, but he ended up getting up quick. Andrade ended up locking Buddy Matthews up, to which Buddy Matthews ended up sending Andrade to the ropes. Buddy Matthews ended up charging out Andrade, who moved out of the way. So both guys were on the apron. Andrade sent uh, Buddy Matthews to the floor. And Andrade ended up doing a nice cartwheel on the apron. And he took out Buddy Matthews. So Buddy Matthews ended up sending Andrade spine first into the ring post. And both guys were beat each other down at the timekeeper's table. So Andrade was up on the guardrail. He ended up coming down on Buddy Matthews. Both guys ended up going back to the ring. Andrade ended up going for the cover, but Buddy Matthews kicked out. 
Buddy Matthews then ended up hitting Andrade in the shoulder as he ended up climbed to the top rope. He came down on Andrade and then Collision ended up going to commercial. And during the picture in picture, we had uh, the medical staff. They were checking on Andrade on his shoulder. It was the same shoulder where he ended up torn his pec. So another uh, medical uh, staff trainer was checking on Buddy Matthews' knee because Buddy Matthews ended up coming down hard off the top rope. So then as Collision came back from the commercial, Andrade was on the floor favoring his shoulder. So the ref was continuing to count. Andrade rolled back into the ring. Buddy Matthews then ended up kicking uh, Andrade's shoulder as Andrade ended up trying to get up. So Andrade ended up using one arm to take down Buddy Matthews. And he ended up taking out the left knee of Buddy Matthews, to which Buddy Matthews ended up going down. Andrade then ended up hitting uh, Buddy Matthews with a double moonsault, uh, which was awesome. Andrade knows how to do a good moonsault than his wife, Charlotte Flair. Yeah, so Andrade needs to start teaching Charlotte how to do a better moonsault, because we all know how awful Charlotte's moonsaults are. So Andrade ended up going for the cover. Buddy Matthews ended up kicking out. So both guys were down. Andrade had Buddy Matthews, and Andrade was then dropped with a DDT by uh, Buddy Matthews. Buddy Matthews ended up going for the cover, and Andrade kicked out. Buddy Matthews went to the top rope. Andrade ended up hitting uh, Matthews, and Andrade ended up attempting a suplex, but that did not happen. So Buddy Matthews ended up kicking Andrade uh, twice in his face, but Buddy Matthews' knee ended up giving out. Andrade ended up coming back. He kicked Buddy Matthews in the face, but Buddy Matthews came back and delivered a huge knee on Andrade. He ended up going for the cover. Andrade kicked out. So Buddy Matthews had Andrade uh, locked up. Andrade came back with a figure four. Buddy Matthews ended up attempting to get to the ropes. And Andrade ended up turning it into the figure eight, of course, in reference to his wife, Charlotte. So Andrade locked in the figure eight. Buddy Matthews ended up tapping. So there you go. Andrade El Idolo ended up winning the match. Post-match, Andrade ended up going to help Buddy Matthews, but Buddy Matthews ended up pushing Andrade. Andrade put out his hand for Buddy Matthews to shake it, and the lights went out in the arena. As soon as the lights came back on, we had Malachi Black and Brody King in the ring. Malachi Black was in the corner. So we had Brody King end up nailing Andrade with a huge lariat. Malachi Black looked down at Andrade and the lights end up going out. And pretty much that was basically that. But overall, this was a awesome match, an awesome match. A uh, return for Andrade. Very physical match it was. And then, as Collision came back from the commercial, we had Tony Nice. Tony Nice was in the ring with Mark Sterling. Nice ended up saying that he is a personal trainer and can't stay in the back watching on the monitor of the most disgusting and fat Chicago people. Tony Nese ended up saying that he is taking over collision and will do personal training. But this was boring over here, you know, with Tony Nese on the mic. Like, who cares about Tony Nese? So, Miro's music ended up hitting. Miro got a big, great ovation from the crowd. And, you know, Miro ended up facing uh, Tony Nese. 
and we had Kevin Kelly and also Nigel McGuinness end up saying that Tony Nese has an open contract under Mark Sterling. So I guess it's an open contract for Tony Nese to face anybody. So Miro then hyped up the crowd, and the crowd was just going crazy to see Miro. You know, it was his return. He hasn't been on TV in a long while. It was good to see, uh, you know, Miro back. He was missed on AW television. But the match was just pretty much a squash match. Tony Nese slipped out of the ring, as did Miro. Tony Nese ended up chopping Miro, which did nothing to him, which did nothing to Miro. So both guys were back in the ring. Miro started chopping away on Tony Nese, also stomping away at him. Miro then tossed Nice into the turnbuckle. Tony Nese, or Miro, had Nice on the apron. He ended up chopping Tony Nese across the chest. As the fans end up counting to 10. Tony Nese climbed up to the top rope. And he ended up coming off the top rope. Miro caught uh, Nice and dropped him down. Mark Sterling got up on the apron. And Miro ended up hitting Sterling. Which knocked Sterling off the apron. Nice ended up coming back. And he kicked Miro. Which did nothing again to Miro. Miro then picked up Tony Nese, dropped him down to the mat. He then kicked uh, Tony Nese in the face. So Miro started stomping on Tony Nese, and he was getting, you know, all fired up. Looked like he was getting hulked up. It was like, Rah! like that. <laughs> so then Miro then locked in the camel clutch on Tony Nese. Tony Nese ended up tapping out. So there you go. Miro. Ended up winning the match. But overall, easy win it was for Miro in his return on AW television. Like I said, the guy was greatly missed on uh, AW television. So people, a lot of people were uh, waiting on uh, this return of Miro. But it was good to see him again. And then we had Tony Storm and Ruby Soho versus Sky Blue and Will Nightingale. This was a solid uh, women's match here. So we had Tony Storm and Ruby Soho. Both of them took out Will Nightingale and Sky Blue as Willow and Sky had their backs turned. Tony Storm started talking trash to Sky Blue's mom at ringside. Sky Blue's mom was also present tonight because she was present on Dynamite where we saw Sky Blue's mom was sitting ringside and Tony Storm ended up uh, spraying the spray paint in Sky Blue's mom's face. The bell ended up ringing at this point as Will Nightingale and Ruby Soho were in the ring so they started off the match. Nightingale ended up hitting Soho and Nightingale ended up going for the cover, and Soho ended up kicking out. Nightingale ended up taking down Soho with a clothesline. Tony Storm ended up causing a distraction as Rousseau was able to take out Will Nightingale. She ended up dropping her, and then Collision went to commercial. And then as Collision came back from the commercial, Rousseau was in control of the match. She was trying to deliver a suplex to Will Nightingale. And Will Nightingale ended up taking in Sky Blue. Ruby So tagged in Tony Storm. So Sky Blue and Tony Storm uh, went at it. Sky Blue ended up delivering some drop kicks to Tony Storm. She ended up going up to the top rope. She ended up covering uh, Tony Storm. Will Nightingale ended up coming in. She ended up dropping Ruby So with a spine buster. Tony Storm had Sky Blue locked in a Boston Crab. But Sky Blue ended up making it to the bottom rope to break up the Boston Crab. Sky Blue was able to tag in uh, Will Nightingale. Will Nightingale ended up dropping Tony Storm with a pump handle. 
Tony Storm sent Will Nightingale out of the ring. Tony Storm then tagged in Ruby Soho. And of course, they had the spray paint. Will Nightingale grabbed the spray paint and sprayed Ruby Soho with it. Sky Blue then ended up dropping Tony Storm with a huge destroyer. And Sky Blue ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Sky Blue and Will Nightingale end up winning the match. I was like, holy shit, Sky Blue got a win. Picked up her first win on television. Overall, it was a solid uh, women's match. Solid women's tag team match. And then we have a video package. Ricky Starks was talking about entering the Owen Hart tournament. So that's you know pretty good. Cool. That's pretty good. And then we had a video package hyping up uh, Jeff Jarrett versus Mark Briscoe, which is going to take place on Dynamite on Wednesday. It's going to be a concession stand brawl. And I'm like, okay, do I care? No. A concession stand brawl. Why is Jeff Jarrett still getting a whole lot of TV time? Can I explain that? So then we had Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was in the ring. He kept introducing... The acclaimed and daddy ass Billy Gunn. So Caster ended up rapping. He ended up telling the fans to tell Billy Gunn Happy Father's Day. Tony Giovanni then ended up telling Billy Gunn that he looks marvelous. So the fans were chanting for Billy Gunn. Billy ended up saying that tonight is a special night. He ended up saying that he went out and got a new scissor outfit. And it was uh, pink. It had scissors on the front and on the back. It said daddy ass on it. So he kept saying that the last few weeks have been stringing on his head. Anthony Bowens then alluded to the fact that they may go after the trios championship. And he kept saying that they want to do the first ever collision scissor. So they have saying that they want to do this in the city. The Scissor Me was born. Anthony Bowens ended up saying that everyone in Chicago loves the acclaimed. So Tony Schiavone ended up joining in. So Tony Schiavone, the acclaimed, and Billy Gunn end up doing Scissor Me Daddy. And the fans end up liking that. They were going crazy for that. And pretty much that was basically that. But overall, okay little segment here with the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Main event. CM Punk and FTR versus uh, Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Samoa Joe. And this was a good match here. This was a good main event. Punk, you know, back in the ring, you know, in 10 months. So we had uh, Jim Ross joined, uh, you know, Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGuinness on commentary uh, for the match. I gotta say, Jim Ross didn't sound that good tonight on uh, commentary. But we had uh, JY and Juice Robinson. They end up coming out first. Samoa Joe, who was the Ring of Honor World Television Champion, he ended up coming out. And FTR then made their way out. They got a big ovation. And then CM Punk's music ended up in. Punk came out yet again. Got a big ovation from the crowd there. So we had FTR and Punk. They ended up making their way down to the ring. So the match got on the way. Dax Harwood and Jay White end up uh, walking up. Fans started chanting. CMFTR, which was awesome. 
Dax Harwood ended up taking down Jay White. He ended up going for the cover. Jay White kicked out. Jay White had Dax in the corner, and he delivered a chop to Dax. Jay then chopped Dax again. Dax reversed and ended up chopping uh, Jay White twice. Dax then delivered a huge uh, backdrop on Jay White, ended up nailing him with a clothesline. Dax ended up trying to go for a sharpshooter. Jay White ended up rolling to the outside. Jay White ended up coming back in, and he tagged in Juice Robinson. Dax ended up getting himself caught as Juice Robinson ended up nailing Dax. Dax came back, delivered some chops to uh, Juice Robinson. Dax ended up tagging in Cash Wheeler. Cash Wheeler ended up chopping Juice Robinson in the corner. Cash then delivered a backslide on uh, Juice Robinson, but Juice ended up getting out of the ring. Juice Robinson ended up coming back. He ended up hitting Cash Wheeler as he fell to his knees. Juice Robinson then charged at Cash Wheeler. Cash Wheeler ended up picking uh, Juice Robinson up and ended up dropping him. Cash Wheeler then tagged in, Dax, tagged in Dax Harwood, who then tagged in CM Punk. And the crowd erupted at that when CM Punk ended up coming in. Cash Wheeler then ended up dropping Juice Robinson as Punk ended up going for the cover. And Juice Robinson ended up kicking out. So Punk attempted to hit the GTS on Juice Robinson, who wiggled his way out of you know not taking the GTS from Punk. Juice Robinson then tagged in Samoa Joe, and then we had, you know, Samoa Joe and CM Punk in there. The crowd went nuts. They were chanting, holy shit. So, this is the, uh, you know, the first time since 2002 when Samoa Joe and CM Punk were in uh, Ring of Honor. So, pretty much uh, Nigel McGuinness and Kevin Kelly end up talking about that history of Samoa Joe and Punk, you know, in Ring of Honor. So Samoa Joe had Punk in the corner. Joe ended up chopping Punk hard. Punk then ended up grabbing Joe and had him in a headlock. So then uh, Collision went to commercial. Then when Collision came back from the commercial, Juice Robinson was in control of the match. He ended up going for a cover on Dax Harwood. Dax Harwood ended up kicking out. Juice Robinson had Dax in a headlock as Punk and Cash Wheeler end up having their hands out for a tag. Juice Robinson then nailed Dax Harwood with a left hand. And Juice Robinson had his foot on uh, Dax Harwood's neck. So we had Juice Robinson end up taking in Joe. Joe ended up nailing Dax with, a, with blows to his gut. And then Dax was down the corner. Samoa Joe ended up grabbing Dax and tagged in Jay White. Juice Robinson was then tagged in. He climbed to the top and he delivered a blow on Dax Harwood. Dax Harwood ended up coming back and delivered a German suplex to Juice Robinson. Dax then tagged in Cash Wheeler. Cash Wheeler ended up chopping Juice Robinson and elbowed him in the corner. Cash Wheeler ended up rolling Juice Robinson. And Juice Robinson ended up kicking out. Cash Wheeler had Juice Robinson on the ropes. And he ended up dropping Juice Robinson. He ended up going for the cover. And Juice Robinson ended up kicking out too. Punk then ended up tagging in. He ended up dropping an elbow on uh, Juice Robinson. And Punk was just very good here in the match. You know, no signs of ring rust, you know, here. So Punk ended up going for the cover on Juice Robinson. Juice Robinson ended up kicking out. So then Collision went to its final commercial. So as Collision came back from the commercial, uh, JY was in control of the match. He had Cash Wheeler in a single leg crab. Cash Wheeler made it to the bottom rope to break up the hold. Juice Robinson then tagged in. He ended up dropping Cash with a scoop slam. Juice Robinson ended up going for the cover on Cash Wheeler, to which Cash ended up kicking out too. Wheeler was up. He ended up trying to make a tag, but Juice Robinson ended up dropping him. 
and Juice end up going for the cover, and Wheeler end up kicking out. So Wheeler was then tossed to the corner as Juice Robinson ended up taking Samoa Joe. Joe ended up kicking Cash in the head. Joe then ended up going for the cover, but Punk broke up the pin. So JY ended up taking in. He ended up chopping uh, Wheeler, and then he ended up chop blocking uh, Wheeler and tagged in Juice Robinson. Wheeler ended up coming back. He picked up uh, Juice Robinson and dropped him. You had uh, later on Punk ended up coming in. Punk ended up working on Jay White. He ended up dropping him with a, a reverse neck breaker. Punk took out both uh, Jay White and Juice Robinson. And he ended up calling for the GTS. He picked up Jay White. But Jay White ended up raking Punk's eyes. Punk ended up firing back with a kick to Jay White. He then climbed to the top. Juice Robinson ended up sweeping uh, Punk's leg. Punk ended up falling down. Jay White ended up picking up Punk and dropped him. He ended up going for the cover and Punk ended up kicking out. Jay White attempted to hit a Blade Runner, but Punk ended up countering that. He ended up nailing Jay White and then he tagged in Cash Wheeler. Dax then ended up dropping Jay White and then Cash Wheeler came off the rope and dropped uh, Jay White. So we had you know, later on, Samoa Joe was choking out uh, CM Punk. FTR was held back by Juice Robinson and Jay White. Dax ended up spearing Jay White, and then he broke up the hold. Juice Robinson ended up tagging in. Punk ended up elbowing uh, Juice Robinson. Punk then picked up Juice, hit the GTS. Punk ended up going for the cover. And, you know, FTR ended up stopping Samoa Joe and Jay White. The ref counted to three. So there you go. CM Punk. And FTR ended up winning the match. But overall, this was a awesome main event. Good to see CM Punk back in the ring in 10 months. Like I said he showed no signs of ring, ro- of ring rust. He moved perfectly well. But awesome match it was. And an awesome show AW Collision was for its first, you know, show. But anyways, that's it for my review of AW Collision. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and the next video will be a movie review of The Flash, which I saw uh, Thursday night, so that'll be the next video. So, Until then, I'll see you all later.